Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of How to Pass the Math FSA. It's the fifth grade edition. I'm so glad that you all are here today. Um, we will be working today on maths.5.md.1.1, which is going to be lesson 17 for us. It's converting measurements in multi-stepped, stepped? Not stepped. Step word problems. So without further ado, let me teach you. Everybody here is example number one. It says Michaela is measuring a distance for a race. The race needs to be a distance of 100 feet. So far, she has measured 28 and one thirds yards. How many more yards does Michaela need to measure? And here I've underlined how many more, and I've labeled that as a subtraction problem that I will eventually get to. But let me make some sense of this. Okay, so it says the race needs to be a distance of 100 feet. So I've made my start and my end a total of 100 feet. And so far, she's run 28 and one-thirds yards. And if you notice, we have two different units up there, okay? So our goal is to figure out how much more she has left to run. And um, I think it's running. Oh, she's just measuring. Okay. Um, so what we need to do is we need to convert that. And if you look at your FSA reference sheet, it says, go ahead and look at it as I'm writing it, one yard equals how many feet? Take a look, take a look, take a look, ding, three feet, good. So my nose is so itchy today. Um, so three feet, one yard equals three feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna convert my feet, because eventually I gotta get to yards anyway. I'm gonna convert my feet to yards for 100 feet, then I'm gonna subtract these two to find what I'm missing, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So 100 feet, if, if we know, so how many yards equals 100 feet? Well, when we're going from one to three, or three to one, I'm sorry, we would be dividing by three so if we're gonna go from 100 feet to yards, we would divide by three. And I've taught you in the past that division can be used as a fraction too. So 100 divided by three can look like that fraction right there, 100 thirds. And now I'm going to subtract my 28 and 1 thirds yards. So now I have the same thing yards and yards. When I divided my feet by three, now I'm converting that to yards. Okay, but I've got a fraction greater than one and a mixed number. So I'm gonna convert this fraction, sorry, this mixed number into a fraction greater than one. So 100 thirds minus, we're gonna multiply three times 28 and then add the one. I'm gonna do that down here. So 28 times three would be 24, three times two is six, plus two is eight, so 84, plus the one would be 85 thirds. And I'm subtracting because I'm finding out how many more yards. So when I add or subtract, the denominators match, which they do, yay. And now I just subtract across, except my denominator is just gonna come over, so I'm gonna bring that there. 100 minus 85, Zero minus zero, you can't do this. So we're gonna do 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 do. This becomes a ten. Then it becomes a nine because this guy needs a ten. Ten minus five is five. Nine minus eight is one. So fifteen thirds of a yard. We can reduce that to because both can be divided by three. Or fifteen divided by three is five yards. So that. It's gonna be my answer. These are gonna take a little bit because they're multi-step problems and they're converting units and it's so much fun. Ah, where's my head? There it is. All right, example two. A mall weighed a turkey at the grocery store. The turkey weighed seven pounds, six ounces. How many total ounces did the turkey weigh? Okay, so we have that the turkey weighed seven pounds. 
six ounces. I'm going to shorten it there. Um, and we're trying to find out how many total ounces. So what are we doing here? We've got pounds and ounces, but we need to convert it to just ounces. If you look at your FSA reference sheet, you'll notice that one pound equals 16 ounces. So seven pounds, we already know the ounces, seven pounds is gonna give you how many ounces? So one to 16, from one to 16 we're going up, so we're gonna be multiplying by 16. So we're gonna multiply seven times 16 to get our total number of ounces. So se I'm gonna do it over here, 16 times seven. Six times seven is 42. Seven times one is seven plus one, four is 11. So equals 112 ounces but we also need to add on our six. So 112 ounces plus the six we already know would be 118 ounces, which is D. And this is a two-parter question. This is part B down here. After she cooks the turkey, it weighs six pounds, 14 ounces. What is the difference in weight after the turkey is cooked? So when we're looking for the difference, we are subtracting the two. So we need the original, minus what it now weighs to get that difference. So the original weight was seven pounds, six ounces, and now the new weight is six pounds, 14 ounces, and you can just subtract these two like a typical subtraction problem. The only difference is, haha, <laughs> the only difference, the only difference is that we can't do 6 minus 14. So what we need to do here is take away one of our pounds, so that would be 6, and each pound equals 16 ounces, so we're going to add on of those ounces over here. So if I were to rewrite that, that would be 6 pounds, and then 6 plus 16 is 22 ounces, and now it's easier to subtract. 22 minus 14 is 8 ounces. 6 minus 6 is 0 pounds, so we don't even need that. So just 8 ounces is your answer. Example 3, it says select all the measurements of capacity that are equal to 96 fluid ounces. All right, once we are talking about capacity with gallons and cups and pints, um, we're going to use something that you are going to have already written on your FSA answer sheet. So this is a test tip. As soon as you begin your FSA math test, you're going to have that reference sheet, hopefully a hard copy of it. All right. When you get that, or let's say that you don't get the, the reference sheet because there's one also on the computer, you're going to get a scratch piece of paper. So whatever you get, as soon as you begin the test, this is the very first thing that I want you to do just to get it out of your brain and onto paper. Okay, put a big G for a gallon. Okay, and make that actually even bigger just for representation's sake. That's big. All right, gallon. Each gallon has four quarts. Okay, Q, 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 four quarts. Inside each quart, there are two pints. two pints inside each quart. Okay, inside each pint there are two cups, 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 two cups. All right. And inside of each cup equals eight ounces. Okay? That's the very first thing that I want you to write once you start cracking open that FSA book. Okay, boom, big G, four Q's, two P's in each Q, two C's, two cups in each P, okay? And then your cups equal eight ounces. So which ones equal 96 fluid ounces? Well, 12 cups, if one cup is 12, I'm sorry, if one cup is eight ounces, then 12 cups would be, then eight cups, sorry, 12 cups, which are each 
eight ounces would be 96 ounces, and that's what we're looking for. So this equals 96, yes. All right, eight pints. One, two, three, four. Each pint, let's start with one pint. One pint has two cups. Each cup equals eight ounces. So eight plus eight is 16. So each pint is 16 ounces. So eight pints times 16 ounces. I'm gonna flip that around to make it easier. Six times eight is 48. Eight times one is eight plus four is 12. 128, no, we want 96 fluid ounces. All right, four pints and four cups. So if each pint is 16, so 16 times four, that would be 64. Four cups, each cup is eight. Four times eight is 32. And when we add them, we would get 96. So yes, this would be one. All right, what about three quarts? Well, each quart has two pints. Each pint, we already said, is 16 ounces. So 16 plus 16 means that each quart would be 32. So 32 for each quart, there's three quarts, times three would be 96. Yes. And then two quarts, one, two, and three cups. So we know that each quart is 32, so that would be multiplying by two quarts. That would be 64. Plus our cups, three, and each cup is eight ounces. 24, if I add those two together, I can already see that it's not gonna be. Four plus four is eight, which is not gonna give me that six for 96, and then six plus two is eight, so that's 88, no. So those are all the correct answers. And remember for multi-select problems, guys, you need to mark all of the correct answers in order to get that point. All right, everybody, we're on the last problem. This is example four. It's a table response, so we're just gonna enter the data right into the table. It says enter the correct measurement values to complete the table. So we've got kilometers in this column, meters in this column, and centimeters in this column. So here they've given me two kilometers, okay? Two kilometers, and I need to figure out how many meters and how many centimeters. So this is the information that would be located on my FSA reference sheet. And I see that one kilometer equals 100, one, sorry, 1,000 meters. And so that means that two kilometers would equal how many meters? Well, to get from one kilometer to 1,000, we're multiplying by 1,000. So we're gonna multiply by 1,000 here to get my meters. So two times 1,000 would be 2,000, okay? And then it says that one meter equals 100 centimeters. So if one meter equals 100 centimeters. So let's compare our numbers. Oops, let me put the other one down. So 2,000 meters equals how many centimeters? Okay, so from one to 100, we're going up. So we're gonna multiply, and you multiply one times 100 to get 100. So 2,000 times 100. And that seems really, really hard, but we've got these magic zeros. So to do that, we just write 2,000. We're multiplying by 100, so we just add on one, two zeros, one, two zeros, and one sends hundreds, comma. That is all you need to do. Okay. Now, here's the easy part, because I see, let's jump down here. See how this says 2,000? Well, if two, kilom two kilometers equals 2,000 meters, then 8,000 meters, we would divide by the 1,000 to get eight kilometers. And then we would multiply by 100 to get, so write our original 8,000, multiplying by 100, so add on two zeros, 800,000 kilometers. 
Okay, so to get from centimeters, 400,000 centimeters to meters, we would divide by 100. So that means taking away two zeros. So if I take away two zeros, one, two, that leaves me with 4,000. And then to get from meters to kilometers, we would divide by 1,000. So one, two, three zeros taken away to get four. And that's how you would do this one. Okay, it's that time. It's motivational time. So this quote comes from a source that I'm not telling you. I want you to guess. Um, but one of my students at my school asked me if I would put this one up, and I think it was a great one, so I decided to. It says, happiness can be found in even the darkest of times if only one remembers to turn on the light. So here's what I want to do. I want to turn it over to you this time. What do you think this quote means? Or, in other words, what does this quote mean to you? How do you interpret it? Write it in the comments below, and I'll be curious to see what y'all say. All right. Oh, also, bonus points if you know where this comes from, and I bet a lot of you have heard this before. So I'll talk to you guys later.